Hi, welcome to Tintone Technical Training. My name is Leo, and today I would like to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is building a plugin in Tintone. Let's get started. This material was created using the April 2021 version of Tintone. We may change our contents without prior notice. Before we get started, there are some of the, the prerequisites that you need to have. First of all, you need to have a Kintone account, and you need to make sure your Kintone account has Kintone System Administrator's privilege. And then you need to understand some basic of JavaScript. Of course, you need to have Google Chrome and a co-editor installed. You also need to clone our GitHub repository if you would like to follow along. And you have created apps using the app template inside the GitHub repository. This way, you don't have to go through other steps to get your apps set up. Last but not least, you have installed Node.js. And for more detail, please refer to this slide. And the link is provided here in this documentation. Here are some useful resources that you can use after you go through or before you start the tutorial. Okay, let's talk about today's agenda. First of all, I'll talk about what's is um, what's Kintone plugin, and then I'll go through the process of creating a plugin template. Uh, environment for you to build plugins using the library create plugin and then we'll go over some of the hands-ons where I will show you step by step of how a Kintone plugin is created using the libraries that we will be introduced and then last but not least there will be some useful plugin tools for you to use when you are building your plugins what is Kintone Plugin? Well, Kintone Plugin is a package program. You can have multiple JavaScript or CSS file inside this pack program. And as a user, all you have to do is install this plugin into Kintone app, and you can do the settings without having to do the codings again. You can easily replicate that plugin um, package into multiple apps and this way you don't have to go through a lot of reset you don't have to open your coding all you have to do is change the setting of the plugins it will work across all your subdomains let's talk about some of the advantages of uh, using a plugin in comparison to using a customization so first JavaScript and CSS file can all be applied at once. Now, with plugins um, or without plugins, you would have to do all these settings inside JavaScript files and you would have to do it in your CSS files. But what plugin will do is it provides you a plugin setting page where all you have to do is make some simple selections in the image that you're looking at we are trying to change the color of certain fields text based on the value of a different field. Now with coding, you obviously have to write a lot of things. But here, the only thing a user will do is just to use your mouse, click around, select the right field, select the color, and then that's it. The second advantage is that you can make changes very easily in those setting pages. So for example, you deleted a field, you don't need, you don't longer need some fields, or maybe the condition when the color has changed is now different. So now all you have to do is go into the plugin setting and change the words, change the options, change the colors, and you can easily change the setting. The next advantage is that in a JavaScript customization scenario, if you look at the image on the left hand side, you will have multiple files and you will need to install those multiple files 
into a different app if you want to reuse it, you will have to repeat that same actions for multiple times. Whereas with plugin, you only have to install into your subdomain once, and you can make it available inside your app very easily. This is a big advantage, advantage number four, is that if you're using a plugin, sensitive information can be concealed. For example, if you're using API keys in one of your plugin settings, yeah, you can hide them from your front end user and just uh, be able to hide that information. And when the user is trying to look for those APIs, they won't be able to find it as easily. Advantage number five is it's easy to upgrade. Now remember, uh, I've talked about all you have to do is install it once into your subdomain. So if you ever need to upgrade your plugin, all you have to do is in repeat that same action, upload the new file again into your subdomain, and it will apply that update to all the plugin that was already installed inside your apps. So pretty neat um, advantages here. Okay, now let's talk about how to uh, build a plugin uh, template using this create plugin library. First of all, let me explain. This create plugin is a plugin development tool designed to make the development of Kintone plugin easier. It is a CLI tool that allows you to create templates with some interactivity dialogue. So if you look at the common prompt uh, below, as a user, you just have to type the command create dash Kintone dash plugin and answer some of the questions here. And then the program will automatically generate the template for you. Some of the optional um, tools that you can use with along with create plugin is for example, the ESLint. Now with Kintel, there's a specific ESLint that is called at cybozoo slash ESLint dash config. This is specifically for Kintone development. So you can definitely use those, uh, this tool when you're developing plugins. Now this is a really neat tool to use along with Create Plugin. And this is basically helping you to automatically package your plugin and then upload that into your subdomain. You would never have to go to uh, the app, manually install the plugin, and upload them and tested it. You will do all these actions inside your terminal when you use NPN star. Now remember, you still have options to choose not to use this uh, additional library. And the library name is called plugin upfolder. So when you set up your template, it will ask you, do you want to use the plugin uploader? If you choose yes, then uh, once you start developing plugins, it will ask for your credentials, what's your subdomain, what's your username, what's your password. It will automatically package your code into a plugin and upload it to your subdomain. This way you can develop, you can test it, and you can do more development without having to break your flow. Okay, let's talk about some of the basic procedure to develop Kintone plugin using create plugin library. Now the procedure here is pretty easy. First of all, you need to make sure the environment you have. Now we've talked about some of the environment in the beginning of the slides. And one of them is basically, for example, is that you need to have a Node.js, you need to have a Kintone account, and your account needs to have administrative access. Now the next step is you need to create a plugin template. Now with create plugin library, this can be easily done. The third step is you need to modify HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Now the HTML, uh, the CSS, those may be uh, applicable to the plugin settings, mostly because you need to um, understand what kind of plugin settings, what kind of 
information you want the users to be able to set, and then you would then do the customization.、Um, basically, what the plugin, how the plugin is going to work when the user opens up an app after the setting is provided, and then you need to modify the configuration files. Let's say, for example, you need to change the icon. You need to include more libraries, and then you need to do、um, before you, be, you before you are able to test your code. You need to package that plugin file and then upload it to Kintone Subdomain, and then you're going to come back to the third step, test your code,、um, repeat the third step all the way throughout the sixth step, and you'll repeat that same cycle of、uh, process. Until you your plugin is finished. Now let's go in deeper with each process. So let's talk about how to create a plugin template using this create plugin library in detail. First of all, you need to prepare the environment for using the create plugin. It is important that you install Node.js. Which should be already done in your prerequisite. Again, Node.js is required、uh, because Create Plugin is published、uh, npm package. It is available in Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Please refer to the engine property inside the package.json inside this repository for the version of Node.js required to use this tool. Now everyone's Asian engines may be slightly different, and you need to make sure that your Node.js is、uh, either equivalent or above to the version mentioned in this link,、uh, which you won't get unless if you、uh, download these slides. And then the next thing is once you have Node.js installed, you need to make sure you install. Create plugin libraries, and you can find that step by step、uh, flow by clicking in this link where it says this article for that installation procedure. And then, in terms of how to use this、uh, plugin, you can then create a template using the command create dash kintone. Dash plugin. You need to、uh, type the name, enter the name of your plugin after you finish typing the command, and you will see an interactive dialog to go through setting up the template for you. For example, what your plugin name is going to be like. Does your plugin name support Japanese? Does your plugin support Chinese?、Uh, what's your homepage URL? And does it support mobile view? And do you want to use the、uh, plugin uploader, such and such? Once you finish answering all these questions, this folder, along with the files, will be created. Now, using the example that I was、uh, demonstrating, the folder, the plugin name is called Simple Plugin. And inside that folder, you'll see files like Node modules. You'll see package.json. You'll see private.ppk. You'll see scripts. You'll you'll see ESLint. And what's most important is that you'll see this folder, source folder, which refers to SRC directory. Inside SRC, there are folders for CSS, for HTML, for image. For JavaScript, and there's a configuration file called manifest, and it's a JSON format file. So to begin, you will need to modify your HTML, CSS, or JavaScript file for your plugin settings. Now,、um, by default, there's a CSS file called 51-modern.default.css. Now this is、uh, one of the style sheet that allows you to、uh, style your forms 
your your HTML elements that looks like Kinto. And then there's a config.css, which is for your plugin files, a CSS file specifically just for your plugin setting page. And there's an HTML config.html. So this is a setting page, a HTML for your setting page as well. So you will need to um, modify those three files in order to set up your plugin setting page. Now, of course, there's more than just that. There's a JavaScript file, and you, once you finish writing your HTML and CSS files, basically once you finish doing your interface, user interface, then you need to add some interactions to it. And you can do that by modifying uh, the JavaScript file. So for example, your HTML file has a message label and it has an input box and inside your um well on top of that you would have the, the bottom the cancel bottom the save button now what you're looking at the screen this is before you apply any kingdom styling and this is before you possibly apply any javascript plugin style sheet which is the 51st modern default.css this would allow you to apply Kintone's styling to your HTML element. You will need to make sure that you use the name provided inside the, um, the, the style sheet, the default style sheet. You will add that class name when you create those HTML elements in order to provide to apply those stylings. So once you apply the styling, you'll see that the same output of the HTML elements now becomes a little bit more close to what a Kington looks like. Next thing is um, you need to modify the JavaScript file. So um, this is done inside this file called config.js. And again, it's under uh, the source folder inside a uh, JS folder. So there are a couple of things you need to include inside this JavaScript file for the plugin setting page. You need to think about what happens when the save button is clicked. So one of the event is when the save button is pressed, um, the input, the data required for processing, the data that's required to, for your settings in order for your plugin to work, it acquires those data inside the fields that you have defined for the user. It's going to process that value in each field and it's going to format the data so that Kintone knows what it is and then it outputs it to a Kintone environment. This way, when someone opens up the app, the, the, it has, your plugin has enough information to execute. There is a specific method inside the plugin set, uh, setting page that save the setting in Kintone. This method is kintone.plugin.app.setconfig. And it's going to take in a config as well as a callback. Now this config is an object that is required. This is basically, um, you need to store the value, um, a, key pair, a key value pair object and you need to define what's key, what's key one, what's key one's value, what's key two, what's key two's value. You can pass that into a callback um, and this callback will be executed once your settings are saved. Now this is not a required callback, so if you don't need to have any functions, any actions that need to be executed after the save, you don't have to pass a function here. You can use 
other API to retrieve those information from the plugin setting page. And that method is kintone.plugin.app.getconfig. And you need to pass in the plugin ID in which we'll go over uh, a little bit more later. But plugin ID is a tax, it is required, and it helps the system to understand which plugin are we talking about. Because obviously you may have more than one, just one plugin into your app. So here we need to make sure that we uh, get the input um, from the plugin setting page so that it can be used when the user opens up the app. Now, the reason it is different from regular Kingdom JavaScript is because when we pass the input value entering the setting screen to uh, Kingdom JavaScript, there is a plugin ID that is dedicated to this plugin and Kingdom will recognize that these settings are specifically from those plugin IDs. This way, it will not make mistake uh, getting other plugin setting and use it for a different purpose. And please make sure that you're using EFI, um, which is referred to immediately in folk function expression when you run, when you write your plugin setting page. And this is just a recommendation to make sure that your plugin is running when the user opens up the page. Okay, and then please also check the settings of the actions um, that, you know, this may be ignored or maybe neglected uh, when we are writing uh, plugins. For example, when someone clicks cancel plugin, uh, sorry, cancel button, what needs to happen? If you don't do anything, nothing is going to happen. Sometimes I would write code so that when people click, when people click cancel, it takes the user back to the previous page. And then another example is that some of the input fields, they are necessary to run the plugin, to run the code. You might need to think about, well, I wanna make sure that the users need to put a required value here. They need to have a value here so that this plugin can work seamlessly. So you can add conditions to check, hey, when you click save, please, please make sure you have a message inside this field, so on and so forth. You can also set things like, well, in case if they don't give you anything, there's an initial value here, so you never have to worry about this uh, plugin from breaking because it doesn't have the right value. And this is very important. Um, those are just actions that require um, for fields that's inside your plugin settings. For example, um, if you're expecting that I'm getting an app ID here. Now this app ID, it needs to be an integer. It could be a string value, it, but it has to be, it has to be a number so that even if it's a, a number in string, I can still turn that into a number. But there are times when people might just pass things you know, out of your imagination. People are creative basically. So it's, um, you need to make sure in your code that you're handling some of those situations. And we would strongly suggest you to go through the secure coding guidelines to understand, for example, uh, what's making your code vulnerable uh, against uh, attackers, hackers, or people who uh, are trying to break your plugins. So. It is necessary to check your operations uh, to make sure that those input values are appropriate. The next step, once you finish doing all the plugin settings, now you can start writing your JavaScript customization. This is where the code is um, 
is executed when the user start doing something. Oh, um, and I should have mentioned that there's um, the file is the it's called desktop.js file, and this is inside JS folder under uh, src the source folder directory. Now, I'll explain a little bit more later, but desktop.js it's often referred as it executes when you use uh, your uh, when you open Kingtone in a desktop computer in a web app basically if so if you're using let's say if you open Kingtone if you open the app using a mobile device or using a tablet device um, there will be additional uh, process needed um, additional setting needed to make sure those will work when the user is not using a, uh, a desktop device so again the desktop.js it's uh, just referring to files that will execute in when user is accessing Kintel using the desktop device okay so we'll need to modify the code a little bit to up to um, to get the settings from the conf configuration file. Now, when you have a plugin installed inside your app, you would have this property called plugin IDs, and that's when where you would start executing your code. So again, it's also you have to write write it in the EV uh, style and pass the plugin ID into your function. Now in this example, it also has jQuery. It's not required unless if you're using it inside your code. Otherwise, um, you can just pass the plugin ID uh, in the format that was written here. And then inside this um, under use script, inside the function you can now get your configuration your plugin setting configuration by using the method kingdom.plugin.app.getconfig and pass an argument of your plugin id now once you have done that you can now access your variable you'll see that i uh, i assign my settings into the config and there's a a, a key value pair called message so basically what I did here is in my message uh, element, that text, that HTML text is going to be coming from the configurations message uh, property. Okay. And then once you're done writing your customization, you can do more settings. One of the things that you can do here is change the icon. So your plugins will come with an icon just to make it look really nice. And you can change that icon to, to, the, to, to be whatever you need. The other important thing that you need to always change um, is the manifest.json file. This is basically uh, how this template is running. This is the key structure of this plugin. And it's over here where you can tell them, let's say if you don't name your desktop.js the same way as what we have inside the template. If you're going to change your desktop.js to index.js, for example, you need to make sure that your manifest is updated as well. You need to make sure your manifest understand that it's not looking for a desktop.js, it's looking for a file named index.js. So. This is uh, manifest is very important file for your plugin. Again, um, just some of the additional information for the, the icon file. It is required. If you don't have anything, um, you can just use the one that's already included inside the template. Um, and you can, it's only limited to like PNG, JPEG, GIF, or BMP files. And then the maximum file size is 20 megabyte, which is actually pretty big um, compared to uh, for an icon, actually. For the manifest file, 
um, it's there. There are fields that are required, and there are additional fields that are not required. But once you, if you are trying going to expand your plugin to uh, to more functionalities, then you may find those additional files very helpful. So first thing is you need to have the version of this manifest. Um, it's just similar to uh, when you write package.json, there's always a version of your package.json and it's the same thing. You have a version number for your manifest. Now you can also put the version of your plugin. I'm sure that sometimes um, when you first write your plugin, it's it's very well done, but you wanted to add additional functionalities to it, and you want to be able to differentiate between the versions from version one to version two. So this is where you can uh, say this is what version of the plugin. Usually, just default it to app. You don't really have to change that. Um, and then the name. This is basically the plugin name for each language. So. By default, you'll see that it has a key of EN, which stands for English, and then the name, the plugin name in English. Now, if you wanted to go a little bit further to make sure that it supports additional language, you can use JA for Japanese name, and you can use DH for Chinese name for that plugin. Um, and then you can also change the name of that plugin uh, if it has a, a specific local locality, and then the description of this plugin as well. Now, the description also comes in similar structure where you can give it a different language. Um, you can use a different language depending on the uh, the locality of the of the user. Um, and then icon. That's where the icon file is. If your icon is in a different folder, uh, they need to be inside the project, but it's in a different folder. You need to make sure that Manifest knows where to get that icon file. Now, all the rest are just uh, not required, but desktop is where the customization file is. This is the file that runs when the user opens up the, um, opens up the the, the app itself. Now, it takes, it takes, um, notice that you can actually pass a string, a array of strings into it. This means you can have multiple JS file inside your plugin. Same thing with CSS file. And if you're making your code available on mobile, you can also have a mobile.js and you need to also specify where your config file is, your H config files, HTML, and their CSS. Last but not least, you can make sure that there's a required parameter for those plugins before your user is able to save them. Okay, so this is obviously the previous chart. Um, does not have colors. So if you look at this, it's a lot more clear. And just want to emphasize on the part where it says desktop. So inside desktop, you'll see that there's a JSS um, and that's basically, you can pass multiple um, files in there. You can use a CDN if you want to. There's a CSS folder. This points to where that CSS files are. And by default, Oh, these these all come in by default, by the way. So you'll have 51 modern uh, default CSS style sheet uh, for you to use. And the icon file is already there. It comes with the default blank icon. Um, the config file, this is all for plugin settings. Now HTML is for plugin settings and those JS files for plugin settings as well. And on the right hand side, that require parameter, that's where uh, the plugin settings. Basically, if you have a required parameter, user tries to save, it does not, and it doesn't have that value, it will prevent you from saving, and then the names and the descriptions. Okay, um, we're at the last step of that flow. 
、um, so bear with me here before I start doing more、uh, something more fun. So when you use that temp、uh, that library create plugin, it will ask you, hey, do you want to use、uh, the Kintone the uploader? So if you select yes, what happen is when you run npm start command, it's going to package for you and it's going to upload the the packaged plugin for you. So it's going to ask you, hey, can you enter your subdomain? Can you provide your username? Can you provide your password? Obviously,、um, those username and password they need to have administrative access. And if you don't want to use that uploader, that's totally fine. You can just、uh, type npm run build, and you can type npm run upload、uh, to use that same flow、uh, very similarly. Now. NPN start is all you need to get your plugin project、uh, development started.、Um, another important thing is this file private.ppk. Now remember we talked about、uh, you need to have a plugin ID passed from your plugin fi setting file to your、uh, kind of like front end the the JavaScript customization file. So private.ppk, that's where the Kingdom plugin ID is、uh, is stored. So this this file is very important. Make sure you don't lose it.、Um, if you lose it, obviously it's not going to be a huge issue. But your your plugin will be installed as a separate identity when you install those plugins again.、Um, so make sure that you don't lose this file. You know, and you don't delete them. Now this file will be automatically generated when you use the create plugin library. The other thing that I want to talk about is、um, if you don't use if you don't want to use npm star for some reason you you want to do things individually, you can use this thing called Kintone plugin packer, which will allow you to manually update that plugin without、uh, if you're not using the template basically. Uh, if that's the case, you just need to make sure you、uh, pass the parameter to tell this library where your private.ppk file is located. Now,、um, just to give you a checklist、uh, to validate your code、um, before you code it down project. First of all, let's look at the installation. Can this be loaded into Kintone environment? Can your plugin apply to Kintone app? That's the first thing that you need to、uh, to to double check. And then for plugin setting pages, do you have a cancel button? Do you have a save button? Does your plugin work as intended? And then for the customization, does it work when you load that application? Does it work? So those are kind of like a general checklist to for you to get started、uh, checking whether your plugin is working correctly. So let's go to something more exciting, the hands-on. First of all, we'll go through how to prepare the environment for creating the Kintone plugin. Now, I'm going to. Use the slides, and I'm going to switch back and forth with my VS Code, so、um, you don't have to follow along.、Um, but if you want to follow along, feel free to pause this video and see what we are doing here. So the goal here is to prepare your environment so that, that you can use the create plugin command, and then we'll learn about how to use that create plugin command. As well as apply that same simple plugin created by Create Plugin to your app. So we'll learn all of those. Okay, the basic procedure. First of all, let's prepare the environment for using Create Plugin. Now, this is mentioned previously. You need to install Node.js, and you need to check、um, what version. Um, what engines that,、uh, you have,、uh, and then install the create plugin accordingly. 
and then and then you can install the create plugin so let's uh refer let me open up this uh page right there and then we can see more details of what it looks like i am going to uh drag my screen over ah there you are great so look at the engine right there okay so it says that the, your node is needs to be uh, equivalent or more advanced than version 10. to check the version of your node.js you can go to your terminal you can type oops paste of me um, you can type no dash v and you can see that i'm using 8.9.4 obviously that's not what the requirement tells me to do so um, you probably don't have to do this but i will just upgrade my current node using this command again your comments may be different from mine but uh, if you're using, for, uh, well, I know that I'm using, uh, I have another version still, I'm using 14.10.0, um, so I can switch my note to that uh, more recent version. And if I type no read again, now you can see that I'm, I just switched to version, uh, version 14. Okay. And now you can, uh, the next step is to install this create plugin. So npm install, and now install this plugin globally. This way, I can access this command anywhere inside my uh, my laptop. And it's uh, at Pintone create plugin. Let me just make sure I don't have a spelling mistake. Click enter, and it's going to download this package for me. And we'll just wait until it finishes downloading and installing. All right, fantastic. So let's go to uh, the next step. Okay, so now that you have finished prepare your environment um, to for this library create plugin we're going to actually create a template using this create plugin library so what you would have to do is open up your terminal and type in the command create dash kingdom plugin and we'll follow through this um this comments here so what's going to happen is when you type the command itself, we'll pass the directory name simple-plugin and it's going to uh, initiate a bunch of codes to ask you how you want to create your plugin project. So back to my VS Code, I'll type create Kingtone plugin. I'll leave the space, type simple plugin, enter. Now, it's going to ask you some of the questions. First of all, what's your plugin name in English? So I'll call simple plugin. Let me just make sure that I'm not missing anything here. And then input your plugin description in English. So it's going to be the same as the name here. Does it support Japanese? No for now. Does it support Chinese? No for now. Input your uh, homepage URL for English. It's optional, so I'll just skip. Does it support mobile uh, mobile views? Uh, no. Uh, would you like to use the plugin uploader? I will choose yes, and I'll show you uh, how uploader works. It saves a lot of your time. Now, it's going to install the dependencies and create the template file for you. Um, I'll show you my folder structure and you will see that this simple dash plugin folder is already created for you. And right now it's just installing all the dependencies, all the templates for me. 
And this is、uh, going to take about、uh, a minute or two, depending on how fast your computer and your connection is.、Um, and let's pause the video for now, and we'll come back when it's finished、uh, downloading. All right. So success to create your plugin templates is now created. You can run those following commands: pn start and pn run build and pn run mint. So again, you can see the folder here.、Uh, simple plugin. You will see the files, node modules. Those are where all your dependencies are. Don't worry about the scripts folder,、um, the source file. That's where your CSS, HTML, image, and JavaScript files, and most important of all, the manifest.json file. Again, this is、um, the, the one of the key component for your plugin. And then outside of that, you have the link file for ESLint. You have the package JSON file, and then the private.pbk file, and that's where your plugin IDs are stored. So make sure you don't lose、uh, those files here. Now, looking at manifest.json,、um, again, it's, it has、um, some libraries it pre-installed for you. For example, the jQueries. And if you right now, when we install, I didn't select that I wanted to support mobile view.、Um, but if you do that, you'll see your manifest、uh, files to be a little bit different from mine, and you'll actually have another key pair of mobile here after desktop, and you'll see more uh, file points, uh, file structures that it points to. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this step. We'll go to the next one.、Um, just to、uh, briefly explain、uh, more about this folder structure,、um, package dash lock dash json file is generated.、Um, if your npm is above five or later. Then this file is automatically generated.、Uh, you don't have to delete this file.、Uh, you can just leave it there. Now, some of the other usual functions that comes with the plugin, as mentioned, is first of all the lint. So, this lint file is going to help you check whether your files are、um, are following the rules. That Kingtone follows,、um, and all these are done automatically for you. And then on top of that, because I choose yes on uh, uh, using Kingtone Uploader, so now I have the functionality, I have the ability to do、uh, automatic packaging and uploading while developing the plugin itself. Okay. So after you have set up your、um, plugin templates, let's talk about some of the optional features that you can use in this in this template. First feature is the ESLint. This helps you check your code to see if it has some kind of、um, issues against to the、uh, to the JavaScript styling, specifically related to、uh, the Kingtone's Cybozoo's rule when you write、um, JavaScript. So first of all, I will cd into my folder, which is the simple plugin folder, and I'll type npm run mint, and it's going to check the styling in my code, and if there's no errors, it will just return as it is. Now, just to be experiment,、um, if I remove this true、uh, true property. You'll see, I actually got a deprecate、uh, deprecation warning, and that's just because、um, I've used this CS link globally. So you may or may not have this error, depending on your setting. But、uh, this is just a, a, a quick way to help you check whether your styling styling、um, is up to the standard. So I'll turn this back on and run the link again, and you'll see that there's no errors here. Right, so that's the first one, and the next one is the 
automation of packaging and uploading. Now remember when we install the plugin, it asks you for options to see whether you want to use the Kintone uh, plugin of Hooter. And this is what it is for. So when you type MP and start, imagine, well, let's say you're using the uh, uploader. When you type MP and start, it's going to have those messages after it package the plugin bundle for you. And it's going to ask you for your subdomain address, your username, your password. Again, your username and password needs to have that administration access to the subdomain. And it will upload the plugin, the bundle plugin for you. So let's see it in action. So let me just clear this out. Speaker actually. And if I type MP and start, you'll see that first of all, it's going to package this plugin for you, which is why you see this Sassidi. A succeeded message and now it's asking you to input your base URL. So I will type into um, technical training, which is my URL, kingtone.com. Your username, you're going to type your username and I'll type mine here. And now it's it will give you messages like it's logging in, it's navigating, it's trying to upload your plugin.zip and now your plugin.zip uh, has been uploaded. When you see this message, this means your uploader has uploaded your plugin for you successfully. Great. Um, and then just to add more notes, when you when you are developing, each time when you change the code, this is going to run, rerun automatically. Um, this way, you don't have to, you don't have to upload your plugin manually each time when you change something. It's uh, that's just done here. So very useful uh, optional features that you can use. Okay, so I've uploaded the plugin. Let's check whether this plugin has been uploaded. So here, I'm going to go to, um, let's see, I'm going to go to my environment here, the Kingtone technical training.kingtone.com. I'll click on this gear icon here and go to Kingtone administrations. If I scroll down, I can go to plugins and you'll see that simple plugin that I just created. Great. So now I know that it's here and the next thing I want to do is to add this plugin to one of my app. In this case, it's the sales deals app. Now this uh, sales deals app is provided to you in the GitHub repository. So you can just download it and install that um, temp uh, app template. I've already done that. So I'll just go into this app and click on the sales deals, go to the app settings here, go to the app settings and the plugins. I'll click on app plugin and here you should find a list of plugins that you have. I'll click a check on the simple plugin and then click this app button one more time. And now this um, plugin is installed in this app. Let's see what uh, what we need to do next. So here we know that it has this description require field has not been set. And that's because in this plugin, it has a require parameter set inside my manifest.json file. So if I open up this file here, if I scroll down to this part, you'll see that there is a require parameter message. And that is exactly what this is for. So I'll go into the plugin settings by clicking that gear icon and I'll type the message. And this message is for King Tone technical training 
good so much. A little bit of message,、um, and then I'll click save. It's going to tell me, give me a confirm message that hey, it has been saved. Now you need to update the app. So notice now it automatically navigate back to this setting page, where you can then click update the app. And now you can see the message that I just typed in: Kingdom Technical Training Hands On Number One. Great. So that's the step. Let's go to、uh, hands on number two. Here we are going to create. We're going to dive deeper into the Kingdom Plugin development. The goal for this hands on number two is to learn the step to develop a plugin using that create plugin. So here we will. Um, we have provided a plugin that is、um, already developed in the repository folder, and you can just download it and run the plugin itself. So, what this plugin will do is it's going to change the background color if the user selected, if the user selected inside the record matches with the user who's currently logged in. So, on the top right hand side, you can see that this is user zero、uh, zero one, and down here, for any record that also says user zero one, it will have a different color. Okay, so let's talk about、um, the settings needed to make this function work. If you go into the setting pages here, first of all, as a user.、Uh, Not a developer, but as a user, I will first need to select which user field do I want to、uh, change the colors for. So here you will have to、uh, define a user selection field, just because you might have multiple user selection fields and you want to choose the one that you want to change the colors on. And then the next option is you need to、uh, select which background color do you want to change it to. Here we're kind of like using the neon blue light,、um, and this is the color that the user,、um, if it matches with who's logged in, then the field color will be changed to this neon blue light. And further down in the page, we'll see that the record list view page inside the app,、uh, the、uh, background color has been changed, and it also works inside the detail view. Of the page of the app. So to get started, first of all, you need to go to that GitHub repository folder and download、um, this file, this plugin project folder, to your local. Now this was already kind of like mentioned in the prerequisite step. So if you already download that folder, you should have this inside the hands-on number two、uh, folder. And then next thing is you need to、uh, change your working folder and install the dependencies. So CD into、um, the hands-on number two,、uh, CD into that project folder of the plugin, and then click npm install. Now before I show you、um, how I did it, let's just、uh, briefly talk about、uh, the changes done here inside the source folder. On the right-hand side, so inside the source folder, you'll see again the CSS folder, the HTML folder, the image folder, and the JS folder. What has been changed for this plugin are all, all the files that is in red, and you can see that we've changed a couple files in order to build this plugin. Once you set up the plugin template. You need to modify your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript file for your plugin setting page. So let's go to my VS Code,、uh, which is over here, and I am still in my simple plugin. So I'll exit, and I'll go to hands-on number two, which is this folder right here, and it has、um, another folder down. In there, so that's user selection conditional format plugin. 
now we're here. So again, first step is that we need to install the dependencies here. So I'll type npm install, just so that I have all the uh, libraries, all the dependencies needed for this plugin. And we'll pause the video here until it finishes installing. All right. So this has finished installed. And then before I move on to the next one, let me just briefly show you what I want you to, uh, what I wanted to describe in my next step. So um, first thing is we want to make sure we update the HTML. Um, and what's important is that you need to make sure you label the class name. Um, if you want to create something that looks like Kintone, that applies Kintone styling, you would write the class name using the 51st modern default.css classes. Um, and I can show you in my VS Code to see where those are located. So inside source, again, there are CSS folders and that's your 51st modern default. That's where all the classes names are. And you can see that it's uh, it's clearly labeled that these followings are for alert messages, and this is for plugin rows, this is for titles, so on and so forth. So using the information provided here, open up the HTML and go to the config.html and just make sure that you have those. And because this is a title, so I put the class name Kingtone plugin dash title. Um, basically, just follow uh, the rules here inside 51st modern default CSS. So pretty straightforward. Um, and then the next step is we need to um, put additional CSS if you have other CSS that you want to include. But instead of writing it inside the 51st modern.default, you will write it inside config.css. Remember that this is just for configuration file, and you can find that setting inside your manifest.json um, file. Notice that inside desktop, there's no files in CSS. That's because we didn't use anything there. But inside config, uh, config file, which is the plugin setting page, you'll see that it's using two CSS file here. That's the modern default and then the config.css. So just make sure, uh, because you don't want to, um, because this is already a huge file. Um, so it is recommended that you create a different file and uh, write your additional custom CSS here in a separate file. So that's um, the next thing is um, the JavaScript file. So inside the plugin settings, um, because we're trying to select the users and rather than having asking the user to type the username, which has to be, which whatever they type, it has to match 100% with your Kingdom setting. So if it's, let's say if it's supposed to be a uppercase K, but the administrator accidentally use a lowercase k, then it will probably break the code. And to prevent that from happening, we want to make sure that we pre we give the users a set of selections. So we need to populate those selections for them and have them choose it based on what's already available in Kingtone. So in this example, we're using this library called Kingtone REST API Client which uh, will help us get all the user's name and populate them into the options inside the HTML. So if you look at this example, again, you will need to pass the argument of plugin ID into your uh, configuration page so that Kingtone knows which plugin settings this is for. And then after that, will instantiate the RESTful API client and we will uh, get the elements 
from the field and those are all the elements that's coming from your HTML file and we will escape HTML so that we can just get the user's input value without all the different characters that was uh, supposed to be there. Um, another thing that you need to be aware of is if you're looking at the code in this example is written in ES6 uh, because it's using const. Now, obviously, um, I think most browsers uh, in the current days have already updated their uh, code, so they should be able to support ES6. Um, but there may be some browsers that are still uh, using ES5. So please make sure that uh, you know which browser are you tapping into before you finish writing your JavaScript code. All right. So the next thing uh, we want to do inside the JavaScript file is, first of all, um, on the right hand side, we want to set default. Now this function is basically, let's say if you already have this plugin settings, um, next time when you open the same setting page, if you don't do a set default, functionality to uh, populate your pro uh, previous value then it's going to always get empty and your administrators may be confused they may be like well i already set my settings last time why can't i see it so you need to first of all populate what's the previous setting inside this config file and before you continue so Again, you're using this, this API called kington.plugin.app.getconfig, pass the argument of plugin ID, which is always unique to, uh, to each plugin. And then this is how you would get your configuration file. And then once you have that configuration file, you can destructure it and then pass it to your HTML, HTML so that you can uh, set a default value for it. On the right hand side, we're basically uh, getting all the user selections here. So uh, the function is set, set user selections, you pass the app ID, and then um, you use the Kintone's RESTful API client, uh, specifically the method of get form fields. Then once you have a response, you can iterate that to first of all make sure it has properties it has the fields that you need and then you will select the option which is also defined inside your html and you will set the user selection you would set the values according to the return value from your form field from your api basically whatever user you have uh, populate them into uh, options on that specific option field. And last but not least, once the user has finished selecting which field uh, for that user selection, they will, we, we will first save inside this uh, config file. And then we will use this API method, kington.plugin.app.setconfig to save that configuration file. This way, you're, uh, when you actually go to the app, not the app setting, but when you actually go to the app, you can, you can find that configuration file. In case if the user doesn't want to do anything, they just want to cancel, you will need to add another event listener to track the clicking of the cancel button and when it happens it executes this code of history.back which basically takes you back to the previous page and then the last code basically says you know turn it into a promise object so you get the you get the users um, whatever users you have first once that is done then you set the default value Obviously, you don't have, you can't really set a default value if you don't have your options available. So that's pretty much it for the plugin settings. 
our next step is to modify the JavaScript customization. Now, this is very similar to your actual customization, which is um, if you took previous training materials, uh, I've explained a little bit about how JavaScript customization is done in Kintone. So in this customization file, you would have to pass the plugin ID as the argument uh, into your EV. This is very, very important. Again, if you don't do that, Kintone has no way, ha it will have no access to your plugin ID, um, um, to the settings of your plugins, and it will not recognize whatever settings you have. So pass the parameter of, uh, pass, sorry, pass the argument of plugin ID, and then use that plugin ID to get the configurations. And then the next line is, we also want to find out who is currently logging to Kingtone. And this is another API method that Kingtone offers, the kingtone.getLoggingUser.code. So that's pretty, uh, that's pretty much the, uh, the first two things that you do. The next thing you do is you add an event listener for the details. So here we're adding an event listener. When the user opens up a detail view, it gets the field element based on your field selection from the configuration. You can see that there is a config.field selection, and that's basically your user selection field. It's going to fetch uh, the field code which user selection fields are we are we trying to change the color if there's no selection fields if it's not there then we'll just terminate this function and return the event if there is a field selected and then that field exists then we want to um, we want to get the field code, the user code of that those values. And if it includes the logging user code, then we'll change the field color. And this takes us back to the, uh, the function at the top is we basically use uh, change the style, um, change the background color of that specific element to the color that the user has specified inside the plugin settings and that's for detail view we'll basically do the same thing uh, in the index view where there's multiple records and we'll just follow a very similar process to check whether this user is equivalent to the user that logged in and if it is change the color Um, once you finish writing JavaScript for your plugins, for your uh, JavaScript customization, then you would modify your configuration file, switch an icon, um, change a manifest uh, uh, file settings in case if you change something. Again, the icon size, uh, it takes file type of PNG, JPEG, GIF, or BMP. Um, and then the maximum file size is 20 megabyte. I would uh, recommend you use um, something a lot smaller uh, because this is an icon that's very pixelated. So you don't have to give something high. You don't have to find a picture with very high qualities. All right. And the manifest file. Again, you can change uh, the name of this plugin the descriptions. Um, if your icon is on the folder that's otherwise specified, if it's different from the template file, then you would change the directory of that. If you have more than one JavaScript file um, in the template, it's using a jQuery. So you, if, if that's the case, you will need to include the CDN for that jQuery or uh, you can download jQuery library locally and then use it as well. Um, and then the file, the desktop.js, um, if it's there. Um, and then this desktop, again, is just for the customization. For the configuration, it follows a different 
formatted. Uh, similar structure, but just using different files. So first of all, you would need to um, tell the plugin where the HTML file is, and then what JS file are we using? We're using uh, the Kinton REST API client library here. So uh, we're basically including the CDN uh, URL here before we even call the config.js. Um, order is very important. So if you're using any CDN libraries, make sure those are in the order where it was called. In config.js, because it's using a RESTful API client library, so you need to make sure your RESTful API client is at the top of config.js. And then the CSS file, and then the required parameter. Okay, and then once you're done with all of those, uh, you can just do a packaging, um, turn that into the actual plugin file, and then do the uploading. I've um, enhanced one, uh, hands on number one, we've talked about the NP and star command. So um, that is just very, very convenient. So I'd strongly recommend use that uh, Kintone uploader. This way you can use NP and star command and do the packaging and uploading at the same time automatically. And you would uh, do again the npn star, enter the subdomain, enter your username, enter your password, and that's that's about it. Once you uh, start that flow, you would just uh, continue to validate your code, to validate your, um, your plugin, to see if it's working as expected. And if you ever need to modify that customization, just go return to step three. Because template is already created, so you just need to uh, change the files that you need to change, and then follow this uh, cycle of flow until you finish. Now, um, let's go ahead and um, do the same thing here in my VS Code. So, I'm already in the right folder, and I'll type npm start. And it's going to, uh, first of all, package the plugin file for me. And then it's going to ask me, uh, what's your base URL? So, King Tone Technical Training, uh, training.kingtone.com. Your name, developer, and my password. Now, assuming I type everything correctly, it's going to uh, log into my Kintone subdomain. It's trying to upload the, the plugin file, and you'll see that plugin.zip has been uploaded. To see that, we can again go back to the administration settings here. So I'll go to settings, Kintone administration, and I'll go to the plugins. And now you'll see that this is a new plugin that just uh, that just got installed. So great. Um, I'll go back to the Cell Steals app, and I will add this plugin. Or actually, before I do that, um, I will add another record or two. So notice that this is, um, I'm locking as Leo Kintone. Um, my first record is Leo Kintone. And I'll create, I'll create another record that does not have the same value. I know I have a developer here, so I'll put developer. And I'll create another record, uses Leo Kintone. And just one more record that use a uh, different value, uh, whatever other choice I have. John, there you go. Okay, so back to my list view. All right, so then um, I'll go ahead and add the plugin. So select the plugin, click add, 
there's a required field and there's a required field because inside manifest we have a required parameter specified so you'll need to go to the setting you need to select the user selection fields and that background color I'll use something that's close to neon blue light and click save and then it will click the settings one more time and click to update the app. So we've done that with create simple records. Um, now you'll see, wow, Voila, King Tone, whatever records that has Leo King Tone is now highlighted in that Leon blue light. Missions accomplished. All right, so just to um, review on the process for validation when you build your plugins. First of all, during installation, does your plugin, can it be loaded into Kintone environment and up to Kintone app? Does it, what this basically means, can users even install your plugin? Is your plugin compiled successfully? That's the first thing you want to check. And then the plugin setting page, you want to also check uh, your whether your cancel button is working, whether your save save button is working, and is your overall your plugin setting page is working as intended for like for example, if you select option A, then it shows option A. If you select option B, then it shows option B. Is it working as expected? Then the next thing is you want to check your customization and see, well, is it loading? Is this code loading uh, in the right place? So is it loading in the list view or is it loading in the detail view? Or did it load in both? Those are the things that you want to check. Um, again, just uh, validations, um, the behavior of those plugins are really, really important. Can it be installed? And then, um, is all the button working? Is it working as intended? Does it save? Does it pop a message when it's successfully saved? And then um, all the background colors, uh, when, you, when you choose a different background color, does it actually show that different background colors? If I select black, I'm expecting that this color, uh, the preview color button, uh, is showing black and then at the end is your code working in general um, according to your plugin settings so that's about it with hands-on let's review uh, a little bit of what we have went over today the advantages of kingdom plugin um, your javascript file and css file can all be applied at once rather than having to install it one by one to multiple apps. And then the next advantage is that the changes can be easily made in the settings. So rather than having to open your code editor, open the, the coding file, uh, change the settings, you can just use a more um, intuitive interface to change the settings so that it's applicable to different app with different settings. Batch application to multiple apps and book upgrading is possible. So if you have multiple files inside, um, inside that customization that you need to use, if you turn it into a plugin, it is possible to have um, to, to apply multiple files at once. And it's possible that in case if you need to update one of the file, it would apply to all the files. Um, all the in different apps and then this is very important that safe sensitive information can be concealed and then that it's easy to upgrade the other thing is uh, when you use create plugin to make the development of Kingtone plug uh, plugins it's making your life a lot easier first of all because it creates a template for you um, without you having to uh, guess yourself and then you can easily modify 
the HTML, CSS, JavaScript files for your plugin setting page. You can modify the JavaScript customizations. We've、um, also talked about you can modify your configuration files, like your icons, your manifest.json file. And then we've talked about how packing and uploading、um, is also、uh, automated for you、uh, if you choose to use,、uh, use the plugin along with Kintone. Uh, uploader, plugin uploader. All right. So before we end this、uh, session, I just wanted to give you additional useful tools that you may use、uh, when you develop plugins. First of all,、uh, there's a Kintone UI、uh, customization tool that you can use, and that is Kintone UI Component. Now, this、um, Kintone has a specific styling. Um, by default, you would have to look at you have you you would have to check the class name of the fifty first modern default CSS file, find the class name, and then write that plugin. Sorry, write that class name into the HTML yourself manually. If you use Hinton UI component, you can create those. For example, your alert message, spinners,、uh, checkboxes, options. Um, in JavaScript, and those stylings will be automatically apply,、uh, apply for you.、Um, in terms of plugin development tools, again,、uh, we went over the create Kintone plugin tools,、uh, make it available in your global state, and then you can just use the command line to create a template file、uh, for your Kintone plugin. You can also, if you choose to go a little bit more advanced, you can use the Webpack plugin, Kintone plugin library. This allows you to use Webpack for your file,、uh, which means it opens up to more possibility, such as using like React, using Vue. You can use a lot more different libraries out there using this Webpack.、Um, and if you want to use Webpack, you can use it along with this plugin. Um, there's another plugin called Kintone Configuration Helper、uh, or Kintone Config Helper. This allows you to get the field information、um, from basically the field information and then the layout information from the Kintone app.、Um, this is if you're not using any API calls. If you're not familiar with any API calls, this may be a great tool for you、um, in order to get the field settings. All right. Thanks again for joining this session, and I hope you enjoy your wonderful day. So I'll see you next time. Thank you.